You're an avid mountain biker. I was hoping to ride my uh, ride alongside you recently when I was in LA, but the heat index was like 200 degrees. Uh, yeah. So it would have been impossible. One of us wouldn't have made it and, and his name was would not have been Mario. Um, but um, how'd you get into the sport? And uh, what's the most amazing ride you had? And I love sport analogies, so forgive me, but are there any similarities between mountain biking and entrepreneurship or research for that matter? Yeah, no, um, this is my favorite question. We should have just done the whole mountain biking <laughs> question this whole time. Um, <clears throat> so how did I get into it? I had a, a very adventurous father. Um, lots of crazy stories I can tell you. Like I, cl I climbed Mount Whitney when I was like 14 in one day. Oh, wow. um, you know, my dad was the type of person was like, let's just go do it and we'll figure it out later. <laughs> So um, I actually got, he, he got me into mountain biking in the 90s. Um, so early days before, I mean, because mountain biking started in the 70s. So 90s is like super early days. Right. Um, and it, so it like now it's just becoming a pretty popular sport. sport. I took like a 15 year, like a 50, yeah, 15 year hiatus uh you know school family business um but it was always in my mind like one day i'm going to go back one day i'm going to go back <clears throat> and i picked it up two years ago like you know right now is the time it's never a good time so i'm like <laughs> i'm going to get back into it right because it was always like i'm going to get back into it <clears throat> i bought a cheap bike at first, because I was like, I don't want to, you know, spend thousands on something I'm not going to ride, but in was instantly hooked again. Um, so I, you know, I rode this same mountain by my house until I hit a certain time. I told myself I'm going to buy myself a new bike. So I hit, you know, took me about a year and I bought myself a new bike. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I, one of the things I tell people, like, it's, I'm a, I guess I'm, a, I guess I, got that adventurousness from my dad like um it's just dangerous enough to keep me interested right like i um i used to road bike but um i feel like road biking is like super dangerous i'm, I'm more afraid of getting hit by a car than falling off a mountain um i love nature i'm, I'm an outdoors person so like I, I enjoy hiking but it's not fast paced enough for me um in terms of the analogy for business, I have so many because I go on these long rides where I just, you know, it gives me time to think. And I think the best analogy is like, in order to go downhill or, and which is the fun part, although I enjoy the climb, like you, you have to do these, you know, monstrous, difficult climbs that take you, you know, let's say on a two hour ride, <clears throat> climbing is like an hour and a half wow right of just just grinding you know depending on the hill i mean around here we're in socal so we have some pretty big mountains you know 20 30 degrees of, of incline and you're just grinding it out for an hour and a half for 30 minutes of of fun um and i i mean i don't think there's a better analogy yeah. for entrepreneurship than that right <laughs> like like you, you got to love that grind because you're going to be, as an entrepreneur, you're in grind mode 90% of the time. Yeah. 90% of the time, it doesn't feel good. Um, <laughs> but you got to you, you, you got, you got enjoy that uncomfortableness, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like that grind, you're not going to last. Um, because I think the perception out there on social media, it's like it's all, it's all fun. You know, um, you get to be your own boss and, um, you know, manage your own time, but it's not like that. Right. It's, it's, it's few and far between the celebrations and, you know, after the celebration, after that downhill, you got to climb again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's my favorite analogy. That's a great one, man. I, you know, I didn't even think about that when I was thinking about asking you about mountain biking, but that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and then you know there's a the proliferations of e-bikes um that's a whole other analogy that it's i've like been thinking about that's like a, the cookies of sports man <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's to me it's like you know e-bikes are like I, I are like those companies that get funded with just an idea right mm. like e-bike like so I have a love hate relationship with e-bikes and that they kind of saved the sport during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like when everybody was stuck inside e-bikes sales skyrocketed because it was, it gave people that have little to no fitness, right. The ability to climb these mountains um, and descend, but they didn't have the skills. Mm. So, People are getting hurt all the time. I mean, I was having helicopters by my house. I didn't know they had e-bikes for mountain bike, man. That's crazy. Every weekend. Oh, yes. E-bikes for mountain bikes. That, wow. it, it, it's huge. And I see that the same thing with like highly funded startups. Right. They get millions of dollars. No idea what they're doing. They bomb down a hill, right? That like 90% of startups fail. So I think that analogy kind of fits perfect with, with wow. not as well. Like there's something to be said for companies that are bootstrapped because you've been grinding and you kind of know, you know, what to do um, when you get into difficult situations versus when you have a ton of money at disposal, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily making decisions based on difficulty or experience. 